I have the joys. Suddenly it is hot in Sydney, out of nowhere. If anyone is in Sydney, like, what, who, how, why, when, three, two, one. That was a terrible clap. There we go, congrats. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the PNS stream today on this Vine. 18th of September 2023. I hope you are having a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, I've had things happen um, just like not not as in groundbreaking life-changing things but like events I've wanted to attend and they all ended up. Greetings Blub, how's it going? Lots of uh, yeah you, you've caught the stream right as it, right as it started. Yeah, no, lots of events coming up all in one go, so... Uh, I'm glad you're along for the ride, and, uh... You know, we'll, we'll, we'll take this as it's come. So this is a stream, uh, I'm gonna be playing a video game. Uh, some of you may know it, some of you may not know it. Uh, it is not as old as me, but I am very old anyway, so... Here we go! Uh... I'm gonna see how easy this transition is. There's gonna be sound. There it is. We're playing a video game by Night Dive. Uh, finally, a 16x9 game to cover the entire screen. Uh, this is uh, a Samuel Villarreal uh, special affair. Are you younger than me? Oh, I might have been. I might have been. Look at this lizard. I love him. I love him. He's got weird hands. Uh, this is a, this is a game that is moderately near and dear to my heart, although I didn't grow up with it, but, uh, I have a huge, a huge, uh, you know, love of everything that, that my boy Samuel Villarreal does, all the way back from, I was following him right when, uh, and I know he did some stuff before, but I was following him right when, like, the Doom 64, uh, Absolution total conversion was a thing, and, uh, from there on, he eventually went for a, like, a super version of this. Uh, might as well just do the training while I start off. Uh, just so you've got an idea of what this game is. Um, he then, uh, does some bad graphics for a 2015 game. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a remaster of a Nintendo 64 game that had a direct PC port. So, they're bad, but they're surprisingly, like, endearing. The one thing I guess you'll get out of the graphics is that there's clear, like, edges to all the polygons, and in this case, it's like this texture is crazy stretched across the object. Um, from which the 90 years, uh, this was 97, uh, this original game. So, Samuel Villarreal, my, my boy, uh, you may know him as SV Kaiser on the internet. Um, I love the, the, like, crazy, like, camera tilt, by the way, in this game. It's absolutely insane. Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, he then went on to, to make, uh, an incredible, like, reverse engineer effort, which was Doom 64 EX. Uh, he also did Power Slave, I think he called it Power Slave EX at the time, and then, uh, Night Dive picked him up, uh, to do some formal ports, and this game is the first of his ports. Uh, I'm not, I'm not playing every single one of his games, although, on, on stream, but I definitely wouldn't be opposed to doing that, you know, over the course of forever. Uh, but I have already played Quake 2021, uh, so there is that. Since I played Quake 2021, uh, just a few weeks ago, we had, um, another great, like, kind of remaster affair with, uh, Quake 2. Um, same deal, uh, doesn't have the custom map support, but it's got enough amount of, like, cut content and other kinds of interesting things that makes it a fairly good package. Uh, this Turok game uh, is a first person shooter and is probably one of the most intriguing ones to me because um, it's very uh, bound to its hardware. They have this, this map as well. But um, yeah, Turok is a first person shooter that came out in 1997 by um, I want to say Iguana are the devs, uh, Acclaim are the publishers, and Acclaim unfortunately don't exist anymore, uh, which leaves fair bits of, uh, gaming history and a bit of publisher limbo right now, but, uh, but yeah, this game, as you can probably tell, is very Nintendo 64, both in its presentation and its, uh, abstract. I love how they're telling you about strafe running already. Like... 
Like, it works. Okay, can you be precise? If you want to cheat, by the way, with aiming, you open up the map and you've got a yellow triangle in the center of the screen that you can clearly tell where you're aiming. Um, it's not as hard on the Nintendo 64 version because generally the center of the screen is a lot easier to judge. Um, oops. Fortunately, there's, a uh, well, and there's this weird blue lightning water. That's not permadeath, that's just whatever death. You know, warp back to somewhere. You'll need to activate a switch, which is quite curious, because I... Oh, I guess there's buttons all over the place. I was thinking there's no, like, levers. Um, but yeah, Turok is... Uh, to me, this was like... Me witnessing Samuel Villarreal in a commercial effort for the first time. Um, you're obviously quite skilled. Good hunting. There you go. It's a fun tutorial just to get you to grips with what the game is going to be like. Uh, I'm going to play the game on uh, the default normal difficulty because this game is, uh, in my eyes, very whack, very flawed, and um, oh yeah, 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 there's, there's just a, a, an amazing tone to this game. You start off, you've got lives and cheeky triangles in the top right. Uh, I'll try and briefly explain this game as it goes, but effectively, I might as well just structure the game right now. You've got keys. What this game is, is eight levels uh, filled with, you know, sort of constantly repeating uh, kinds of scenes. Uh, stuff you're coming up and hearing about it prompted me to finally get uh, No Man's Sky to test it out. I hear No Man's Sky has definitely recovered a ton from that initial launch. Uh, but effectively, how the game works is that there's eight levels. Each level has a piece of an ultimate weapon. And if you collect all of them, you'll get the ultimate weapon. And on top of that, there's, uh, you know, so many keys in the level. The first level is six. Most of them have three. The seventh level is two. Um, you need five keys for the final level. And every other level has three keys somewhere scattered across it. Um, you're effectively going to need to pick up every single key in order to beat this game. Um... This game is, for the most part, a very standard uh, first-person shooter, but it does have swimming and lots of verticality in it, which makes it a very curious one at the time. Uh, 100%, um, I guess that is what your definition of 100% is. I'm not going to go for all the, what the game marks as secret areas. Uh, you, you need all the keys in order to even beat the game. Um, but I will be going for those, uh, the, the Chrono Scepter pieces, the ultimate weapon. Um, mostly because they're not too hard to, to find. Uh, as a heads up, when you start this game, uh, you've got your bow, which uh, you saw in the, the tutorial. This is already one of the keys right here. Uh, it's It says level 2 key because it's for level 2. It's not. I'm not on level 2 already. Um, but uh, you want to start off this game by uh, trying to like stab all the humans you come across. Because on, well, one, everyone drops, like, some health and potentially some ammo when you kill them. Um, these guys are just chilling here. You're gonna see me just run around and stab these guys for a bit. Circle strafe gets on. Um, but yeah, uh, the only other thing to really go for if you're going for 100% is all the, um... Uh, this is a bit of a weird room if you're gonna try and get people. I'll try and stab this guy. Um, this is a bit of a weird game for 100% because, yeah, there's those secret areas, but there's really no, like, counter or anything, um, to indicate that you've really done it, except for the Steam achievements. There is a Steam achievement for the remaster. This is the second key already. We're not going to find the keys anywhere near this close uh, in the future, though, so don't worry. Um, also, the enemies respawn like champs, so I'm not going to stop and kill them all. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try like a decent job killing them. Uh, all the stuff you showed now where it showed the infinity symbols. Ah, yes, the key screen. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're all just saying that like the keys for individual levels and uh, I don't know. To me, I don't know which level really corresponds to which symbols, but um, just, just you're going for all the, all the keys. That's basically your goal. Uh, we are not getting the things that I'm really wanting. I'm a little bit unlucky. There's a, there's a chance, uh, if you're not on the hard difficulty, there's a chance that when you stab someone, or you hit them with a the bow and you kill them, they'll drop, uh, a special item. It'll probably come up. I'm gonna need four of them. It maxes out at four. Well, I'll, I'll explain it as it happens. Uh, but you're just gonna see me stabbing a bunch of people. This game is also a war of attrition. There are so many enemies, 
and just not really en enough ammo to really be tackling them. I know I'm picking up, like, this pistol, um, and it's not too bad. Oh, and we've also got these little bonus rooms. Uh, you're going to see these blue portals. Uh, every level has two different bonus rooms, and you're going to find, like, and that has a shotgun just straight off the bat. Um, I'm going to try and go through both bonus rooms every time. Uh, there's, there's enough of the level that you're probably going to see the portal. And if you fall down, don't worry, you just start back at the start of the, you know, the area. Um, so you can keep trying. Uh, but, oh yeah, this game just happens. There's so much stuff happening. Um, it's very arcadey. Very just like, yeah, it's very of its time, but... Um, also note one thing with the uh, with the PC version, the, and not just the PC version, but also the 2015 version. The draw distance is a lot larger than what it used to be. Um, because if I, like, just for example, go into the, uh, the graphics, and we... Nope, it's in the gameplay, of course. And you turn off the draw distance. Yeah, you can't see anything in this game, so... Uh, only thing about this port that's really a downgrade... Or not a downgrade, but a downside is, um, uh, it's only at 60 FPS. There's no arbitrary frame rate. Um, same thing with the sequel. Oh, here's the thing. A mortal wound. Uh, picking up a mortal wound, oh, there's another one, Mac, uh, increases your max health by five. Now, this only caps out 120, so only four of these are needed. Um, and then from there on out, you don't have to do stabbing things. Um, I believe only the human enemies really drop them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it absolutely ruins RuneScape. Um, real talk as well, like, if your computer is, like, good enough for, like, you know, when you're playing Minecraft these days, like, legit, up that random distance, that is, like, such a treat to be able to see that far. As long as your resolution of your screen can really, like, tell the difference, um, you know, go for increased draw distance. Um, I remember, yeah, very old RuneScape had really low draw distance, um, and then, yeah, like, later, um kind of community versions would have increased draw distances. The problem is that your, like, your game itself doesn't have, you know, you can't see game logic beyond the draw distance. This game is a lot of circle strafing and shooting things, uh, um, you know, paths will continue, paths will open up, that kind of stuff. There's also lots of platforming, isn't there? Um... We go. Let's try and stab more people. Get two more mortal wounds, and that portal closed. Don't worry, the portals will just randomly exist and not exist. And honestly, it's not a biggie if you don't get the portal because they'll show up elsewhere. Um, I believe it always alternates which bonus area you end up in as well. So just because I missed that one doesn't mean I'm suddenly gonna not come across that bonus area. Um, so yeah. Uh, throughout the game you saw there was a checkpoint, there's also these actual save points. Notice my saves are from 2019. I didn't play this game in 2015. Sorry. Sorry everyone. Uh, but I did have 2018, and I'm gonna keep my raw 2018 save right here. But I'm gonna start getting rid of my, some of my other ones. Um, so, uh, <laughs> heresy, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I think if you go forward that's actually not the, the way to go, it's just got like two enemies standing up here. There we go. Uh, this auto map, by the way, did exist. Oh, there's another more wound. This auto map, uh, which is potentially very hard to see on stream. I'm sorry. But it did exist in the Nintendo 64 version, which is very incredible that an auto map even existed in that game. Um, because there's a lot of 3D games where, like, they just, you know, how do you represent an auto map? They just never did. There you go. There's all my wounds. Um, if you're playing on easy or normal, that is, you know, something you definitely want to just do. I can start using the pistol. Uh, but yeah, oh, this this game is like... Different levels will play differently. So we're back here at the beginning. But now, you know, a little bit else. There's also a lot of alternate weapons. We've got alternate, uh, you know, shotgun ammo here. This is explosive rounds. You will burn through your alternate ammo before your regular ammo. Uh, and explosive shotgun rounds are cool, but you know, they don't last forever. Um, got these ladders all over the place. I love just like the, um, I guess this was a big thing in like 20, oop, hey, I heard it, I saw it, here we go, here's the other bonus area. Gotta watch out for these things, these things will absolutely wreck you if you're not paying attention. Um, but yeah, this game, from my first playthrough, it was like, yeah, it's a, it's a very classic, 
you know, just 3D shooter, 3D, you know, boomer shooter, so to speak. Um, but I think the part that's, like, super endearing is that it's... It really encompasses the Nintendo 64 and all of its, like, weird limitations, but also all of its weird strengths. There's lots of great colored lighting and... Uh, well, maybe not colored lighting, but just, like, color grading. You're gonna find these ultra healths in these bonus areas are very worth it, but... Uh, don't keep going into the bonus areas, because the bonus area stuff doesn't respawn. I think if you exit the level, maybe it does, but... You know, why exit the level? Uh, I'm gonna try and see if I can do all this stuff from memory, by the way, so if I miss keys... Well, I'm gonna have to go back for it. Uh, the goal is, uh, the stream goal, is, uh, two streams. We do half the game this stream, so the first four levels. They're all about the same length, so... There's no sweat there. Um, that's all the, t the the level 2 keys, by the way. So, in theory, if I walk to the end of the, the level, I'll be able to go to level 2. Um, but, like, it's got, like, this fun, like, circle strafing. I love how, like, blocky the textures are on these enemies. And how wonderfully looped the higher resolution textures are. It's like, oh, you know, like, this vine texture's a lot better. The, it's a bit of a magic eye puzzle when you come up close to it. <laughs> um... But also just like, you know, the low draw distance, the, you know, the labyrinthian elements of some of these levels eventually. Um, and ultimately, like, this game, it's not procedurally generated, but it does give me that feel where it's like they defined some models in more algorithmic ways and just kind of went with it. Or like, several rooms are just like the same geometry stuck together, which is very kind of fun and interesting because games like Quake uh, tried to go with the binary space partition model for, you know, increased performance, and then suddenly we just had, you know, graphics acceleration and sort of cheesed it. We just went with it for this game. Um, uh, I think I mentioned it, but I love the people who do texture hunting, finding out where textures come from. Oh, like, yeah, the raw source of the textures. Yeah, I'm curious. It's like, this tree doesn't look like a tree, but I love how with the increased draw distance you get, like, a bit of a canopy up the top. Uh, we've also got the spiritual invincibility, which is, uh, basically makes you so much faster than everyone else, which is a little bit confusing if you're trying to figure out whether you killed an enemy or not, but it works. Uh, I also love the people who make videos about it. Uh, these, like, small wild animals also sometimes drop a lot of health and things like that. I love this, like, bottom bit here. Now, the trick with the arrows, one, I've got the explosive tech arrows, so never mind, uh, where they dig up old CDs that sold for, like, at, like, three conventions in 95 were used for, like, oh, like, the ones with the sound effects, especially. A lot of people would have all the same, like, sound effects CDs. It's incredible. Um, but I love, like, how this game just sort of presents itself to you. It's just, like, here's a bunch of just platforms, enemies. I just double-killed that guy, by the way. Uh, here's just a bunch of platforms, like, you just gotta, like, wander to the end of a scene, basically. And it's just like, oh, it's up here. But then suddenly you're underneath where you were, which I think is pretty cool. You never know where, like, all these, like, rooms and exits all keep leading to, but, hey, here's another one. Uh, this whole game, The Eye of the Dragon. I don't know of that one. What, uh, what system was that one on? Hold on, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll keep going, because I know I know that one room is, like, where you continue on the level, but I'm just curious where this leads. Also, you're just seeing, like, the fog all in the middle here. I hate taking out these lizard enemies, so I just never do. An assault rifle. Wow. It's bound to six, by the way. The best key. The reflections are a little distracting. Like, in reality, it's like, wow. <laughs> like that. There is not enough light to show, like, a proper reflection like that. But, sure. Okay, I'll accept it. Here we go. I love this room full of just, like... Just, just walls. This is, like, I can't describe this room any differently than there's just walls. I love how the map lies to you as well.
So yeah. Uh, yeah, throughout the game there are actual secrets. I'll probably stumble upon a couple of them because I do know of a couple of locations of secrets, but yeah, in general, uh, I'm not gonna be <laughs> getting really all the, all the doodads. We're just getting enough that, like, it shows the game. But this is apparently a secret. In fact, most of the Chronoceptor pieces are in what are considered secret, so... PC, I believe, from 2004. Okay. Okay. What kind of game was that one? I like how, as well, with the, uh... Oh, I remember reading about it in my gaming magazine of choice and thinking, pretty cool. Nice. I'll give that a look afterwards. Um... I love how the draw distance, despite being extended, is still sort of controlled by the game as well, so that's cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll exit this room. I believe in this level, no, you sort of can't come back. You gotta, like, there is some exit that will allow you to loop right back to the beginning. You've effectively just got to loop straight through the level every time you, you do it, so if you miss something, uh, hope for the best. Hope that it doesn't take too long to run back through the level. Try not to exit the level. Oh, in some cases, you sort of have to exit the level as well. It's a little punishing. This game is a bit punishing, but ultimately, there's a very generous amount of health in this game, on normal at least. On hard, it starts getting a bit obnoxious. I see, yeah, I'll just demonstrate. If you go back into a portal, it's like, oh look, I'm back in this room, and there's no items. So, there's no point in really going ahead and doing it. Uh, but yeah, this is a very, like, interesting game on the Nintendo 64, because, um, I think... Was this enhanced by the expansion pack? It wouldn't have been 97 then on the Nintendo 64, right? Maybe. I love this, like, massive pits all over the place. I like how the music keeps changing as you go throughout the game. Uh, oh, and bonus points. Uh, the, uh... You can switch between the soundtrack. I'm going with the PC version on this one, but some purists, uh, like the Nintendo 64 version, so... Just know, there's two versions. Now, as much as this game has some very, like, Nintendo 64 level design, I think Turok 2 is such, like, a transcend... Uh, what's it? It transcends this kind of, like, aesthetic. This very Nintendo 64 aesthetic into something that's actually, like, really good. So, uh, if you... If you enjoy this game, go play the second one. I can't tell you anything about the third game. I haven't played it, but... Um, ah, here we go. Some explosive shotgun shells. There you go. Took him out in no sweat. Um, oh yeah, and you see me pick up these triangles. Uh, 100 triangles gives you a life. Um, it's gonna be very slow at first, although I did- I have gotten a life already. Uh, this game is, uh, classic Irem though. I know Irem didn't have anything to do with this game, but, uh, the lights can't go higher than 9, and unlike that, it doesn't keep going in the back. It's like, no, when you're at 9, your triangles stop at 99, and then it prevents you from picking up any others, so... Um, but yeah, that's... This is the end of the first level. This level called The Hub leads to The Hub. We have six portals around and a pit in the center, which takes uh, the five pieces. Um, you'll go up to a wall and you try to figure out which one was level 2. This one is level 2, and away we go. Uh, and yes, I've gotten the chronoceptor piece. That was the thing earlier. Uh, you cannot use partial chronoceptor pieces. This is not like, um... Uh... Like, um... What's the one game? Strife? Where it's like you collect pieces of the, uh... Of the ultimate weapon. And as you collect more pieces, you can actually use, like, a stronger attack out of it. Until it becomes, like, this godly weapon. Um... But yeah, so this is the second level. Uh, it, this game has a very generic first two levels. I think the first two levels don't give the game quite the justice. I mean, I guess like, you know, it's a jungle for the first level, sure, okay. Uh, but I think the second level really just makes it seem like this is the aesthetic for the whole rest of the game. But really, every level does have its own kind of vibe going on. This one's got, a, you know, more pits, which... Uh, by the way, this game does the thing which really irks me, which is... Bottomless pits, you lose an entire life. 
Uh, if you suck at platforming, and on a Nintendo 64, you probably will. Uh, here's a little hidey hole. I know this. Um, you know, you're going to be losing lives in places you really don't want to. Fortunately, you can save the game and just reload the saves. Uh, so don't worry if you're losing too many lives uh, from pits. Just, you know, just reload a save. And uh, on normal, again, this game isn't too bad. Uh, they didn't really... You can clearly see beyond this wall that sure, okay. It's all these like weird places you can jump to as well and you'll find like these weird rooms that don't have anything to do with anything. I mean, yeah, I say that, but also, and, and those purple ones are worth 10, so they're very nice. Uh, I say that, but like, I just came out of uh, like Rayman 2, a game which perfectly doesn't punish you too hard for falling into pits, and it also doesn't have lives. Yeah, you wanna you wanna jump off because uh, you don't get um, any involved from those things, and when all four hit you at the same time, it's a bit painful. Uh, did the old Zelda games also have instant death chasms? Um, uh, no, all of them. I think all of them would always just take off some health. I can't think of any bottomless pits in um, Link to the Past. Uh, does Zelda 2 do it? Oh, Zelda 2 does it. It's been like forever since I've played Zelda 2, and uh, I don't remember a ton about it. I never, I didn't beat it. I got very close to the end, and then I was like, yeah, no, nah, this is a lot of effort. Um, you're gonna find some terrifying, like, edges of ledges like that as well. And the worst part, you're gonna. Oh! Look at that! Actual secret! Wow! found a secret. Yeah, oh, I, I, I hate instant death cat. Do you like how the enemies are respawning on me already? They don't wait in this game. They really do just go for it. Um, but yeah, oh, I, like, I recently, I actually played over the last week, um, Aladdin Nasira's Revenge for the PS1. It's a, uh, a 2001 PlayStation game by Argonaut. Uh, the same Argonaut who's, I played two games already. In fact, I played the two games that, uh, surrounded that game they released. I'll take Instant Death Cabins fit, fit in some genres. Yeah, like, I can't universally knock them, but, like, in, like, say that game, for example, Aladdin, the series Revenge, it's like, that game is a platformer. It's got so many pits all over the place, and there's a huge problem in that game where it only gives you lives as bonuses for beating the levels with the collectibles. There's no lives in the middle of levels, or coin. well there's coins, but the coins don't add up into lives. Imagine Hotline Miami style fast paced short level. Oh yeah, 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 Hotline Miami makes sense. I, like, I'm not saying bottomless pits are dreadful, but I hate, like, being bound to, like, lives and punishing so much harsher than the rest of the game. Because in this, it's like, you've got so much health, like, it does take a fair bit of a beating in order to lose all your health. But a bottomless pit takes it off immediately. The Aladdin game was the same deal. You had so much health, but bottomless pits, whole life gone. And the fact that you can't get more lives in that game, um, absolute painful. Like, I did actually, like, game over just at the end of the game. They were very generous with lives at the beginning. And you could build up to the cap of nine. Funny how, you know, same, same deal. Um... But in that game, you know, the platforming sucks. The platforming is real shonky, because it's got this problem where Aladdin has such a weird, like, build-up of momentum before he, like, when he jump. sorry, when you start moving. But when you jump, that momentum is instant. Uh, but not when you jump after walking for a bit, so there's, there's a... So if you move and jump at the same time, you immediately jump with full velocity. If you move and then jump like a quarter of a second later, you jump with not the full velocity. Why, what am I, am I hitting a wall in front of this guy? <laughs> Weird, okay. Uh, all game design was to make the thing hard because people spend weeks playing the game, but my cool uncle could be in one five hours sitting at the family meeting, keeping all the young ones entertained. I think I was part of old arcade as in literal arcade holdover because we still train. Yes, yes, exactly that, exactly that. And, and to be honest, lives, don't make a ton of sense coupled with health. Um, 
I, like, I think that a lot of these games would do the health system and then would also do the lives. I know Wolfenstein 3D uh, did both. I don't really think it really works. Like, I understand, you know, let's, you know, let's let the player take some damage before, you know, failing them, sure. But, like, the whole point of the lives in the arcade context was, okay, now you need to get more money or stuff like that. Um, and I'm okay with, like, oh, you know, um... Yeah, yeah, with this, yeah, if you've got infinite quarters, you can beat these kinds of games in one go. Um, I, I don't actually quite know what happens in this game if you run out of lives. I assume you've got to reload the save. Um, like, a, like it's a hard game over, but, you know, you've got save points. You like how it takes forever to get to one of the... I'm pretty certain one of the keys already happened and I missed it. I can guarantee that's probably happened. Um, but yeah, like, I, actually, okay, I take it back. I don't mind, like, okay, like, you can take hits, but then if you die, you gotta go back to a checkpoint. If you fully die, you know, lose all your lives, then there's a bigger punishment. Sure. I'm, I'm okay with that. I just hate that, like, you know, a game over is, sorry, a, a, a bottomless pit is, like, stronger than, you know, taking a hit like that, or whatever that was. Um, oh, I can aim. I can aim. No crosshair in the center really gives me that, like, um, uh, I was gonna say Payday. I remember playing Payday 2 and, uh, that one's, uh, got no crosshair in the center. People who have, like, those monitors that just overlay a crosshair in the center of the screen. I swear, I swear. Um, there we go. There's another bonus area. They got lots of these two health things. It's a very, uh, Doom thing. The little tiny pickups. Also, I guess it's fun just, like, platforming and... Oh! And pendulums. Ooh! And Zed fighting! Ooh! Uh... I'm playing the game at 4K, by the way, so it looks just sort of blocky, but trust me, there's individual lines in there. The trick with playing at 4K is then you don't have to play with anti-aliasing on. That's a pro strat. Blendo pro strat. You get those health pickups, but you, your health is already big enough. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the... Um... Yeah, that Aladdin game, it was, like... There's a bizarre jump in difficulty because they really want you to like... Well, they, they start throwing bottomless pits all over the place. They they are sort of generous. They've got like just... Uh, oh, there's like a trough. Or, oh, you've got to climb out and maybe you take some damage from uh, from a poison swamp or something like that. Uh, but eventually, like, that becomes lava that basically instant kills you and just bottomless pits all over the place. There's a notorious part of that game um, involving an ice slide. And there's just, like, collectibles on that ice slide, and it's just like, oh, it's pain. Also, there's a- oh, while I'm at it, there's two levels where you ride the flying carpet, and you move so darn fast. You can- you can break, there's- there's a- you can press L1 and R1 to slow down, but then you can't turn while you're doing that. For some odd reason, <laughs> like, what's the point of slowing down if you also can't dodge anything? That's some good superhero landings right there. I love to see- I don't know if you're seeing that, but there's like that, like, small gap between the wall. <laughs> I also like how all these enemies drop grenades, but like... You don't get a grenade launcher until much later. I think we might get it- I don't, I don't know if there's one in level 4, but... Um... I like this, by the way. This, like, climbing wall. It's- it's massive. It's such a trek. Time this one. What a thrill! <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I- wh what else about that game really irks me? Like, yeah, the- the platforming was super off. Um, it's got this combat where you can swing your sword and, uh, block. And your blocking is immediate, but, like, um, a lot of enemies, like, just they don't have really a great pattern as like how they attack so you can't actually dance around and respond to them 
you just have to just spam the attack button. You've got so much health anyways, and you're gonna lose it all to a bottomless pit, so why not just spam the attack and get it over with? Um, the only time I wouldn't do that is the first boss of the game, who telegraphs his attack. Isn't that funny that suddenly, you know, that's the case. Uh, I love this high ledge because then you can see right there, there's a guy here. And I, I love that um, there's a later level as well where this is the case. Uh, there's the Chrono Scepter piece, by the way. Um, like, the draw distance is low, but it's just enough to see the next platform, so it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, he's raptors all over the place. We've been through the, the, the thing, you see? Oh, maybe I should have grabbed the thing in the center. I could have died in that moment. I could have died. Uh, the enemies, I believe, have, like, double the health on hard, so that's the other reason why. It, it's, like, it's less that there's, like, I don't know if you take more damage, I don't think you do, but it's just the fact that, like, the enemies are so bulky. It's not, I don't know, it doesn't particularly rub me the right way to have spongy enemies. Look at this! Look at this! He's hiding this all over the place. I love these, like, logs as well. It seems terrifying, but it is, like, you know, well... Like, there is some virtual ramp somewhere under here. What these jumps, though. It, it's such, like, fun adventurous level design. It just takes you all over the place. And I feel like the second game is, like, a, you know, an absolute treat. The backpack, by the way, uh, what it does is that you double your ammo capacity. Um, so now, instead of 200 bullets, you could hold... Uh, sorry, instead of uh, 100 bullets, you can hold 200. There's no point in using the pistol after you get the, the, the assault rifle. Is that what they called it? Um. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that's like the second of the, the um, keys. And if it's the third, that makes me feel even worse. Yeah, the levels are still about half an hour long each, but, um, yeah, it's just the fact that there's, like, six keys in that first level, so, you know, you just burn through them, you just get them all. I love these, like, cave noises. You're gonna hear, like, some real loud, like, ambience all over the place as well. This fun another just pit catches everyone off. Level four key! I'm very certain that's the middle key. That is the middle key. Mm, I'm gonna go back. Because I believe this is a level you can walk back on. And it'll, it'll save me so much time and effort if I walk back. And I'm probably gonna see the key as I walk back. Like, it's just like, oh, you just have to turn around. By the way, uh, don't use that. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a general rule. The keys are not in order on the stats screen. I believe uh, level four, one of the levels, it's like, nah, they're definitely backwards. It's definitely the other way. Do you like how, by the way, the first level had all these, like, exit teleporters all over the place? And then, like, this level is just like, nah, like, it's all there, it's all straight. I assume the game is dynamically, like, building the level as it goes along and, like, reading the right parts. Uh, cause no way, like, is this whole level in memory on the Nintendo 64. It's obviously gotta be, like, in sections. Actually, I take it back as well, because, uh, classic Samuel Villarreal, um, I don't know if it's his decision, probably not, but... Um, a lot of these Night Dive remasters actually do, like, sort of a, a super version where they'll sometimes put, like, cut content or otherwise, you know, this own kind of custom twist on, on things. And, um, the next game I'm going to play, uh, which is uh, over the Halloween, uh, is another one of those games. And that is filled with cut content, filled with all this stuff that, like, wasn't in the original release. Um... I know Power Slave combines elements from all the different ports. I believe it's a hole there. I don't know if you can hear that ambulance. That is a very loud ambulance. Thank you, ambulance. Doing doing good work. I always miss this one. I always wander right past it. I don't believe there's an oxygen meter. So don't worry about a drowning, because you can't. Again, just a, just a lengthy cave. But, uh, yeah, no, yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> it was here the whole time. 
It was worth going back for it. <laughs> Roofs are my enemy, apparently. Listen, you can't have, you know, collision detection on everything. That's always a fun part about, like, old games as well, is, like, how much, like, fudging of geometry, uh, famous last words before the song drowning music. Oh, yeah, that would be. Listen, you're Native American in this game. Just so I know, isn't it weird that, like, uh, the country of India? Like, I was thinking, you know, people call, like, natives Indians. Um, that's a very, like, you know, Western word. Um, but then, like, you know, the, there's Native uh, Americans, which are referred to as Indians, I guess. People don't really do that anymore. Um, and now India themselves are calling themselves Bharat. Um, and they're probably going to commit to it, I think. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll call it now. If, if, you're, if you ever see the, you know, the name Bharat, that's B-H-A-R-A-T, um, just know that that's uh, what we've been referring to as India forever, and uh, they're probably going to commit to that name, and given how we use the word India in more contexts, um, it's the Hindi name. Yeah, like, and, and honestly, it's just like, yeah, India is just... Like, that's the name the British gave it, so... Listen, I, I'm like, all power to them. Um, you know, to change the name. I don't, like, I've got no convictions for, like... You know... I got no reason why it still has to be India, given... Yeah... Oh, not, not everyone wants it to be called Bharat, or not everyone wants it to be called... I know some people don't want it to be called India. Um, if they don't want to be called Bharat, uh, I'm curious, uh, how they feel on that one. I guess as someone who doesn't live or really, you know, have no interactions with, uh, with the country, so I got no, no opinion, but it is a curious... Oh, is it because, like, not everyone is, like, Hindi, or is that... Look at Africa. Now, what are they doing in Africa? Arbitrary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I lied. They did put a portal in this level. I, I just love. I I love the the blood in this game. It's just hilariously like over the top. I hate this enemy though because it's like it's such a bit of a blind like shot. Like I'm here. I am guessing the center of my screen. Uh, Pakistan India conflict. I sort of know it, but I don't know enough about it. Don't say Pakistan wanted to call themselves Bharat. Also, rocks. Just, they're queuing up. <laughs> they're queuing up. They're ready. These rocks are ready when you're ready. Uh, India but internally is mostly Hindi, but even those that do not, uh, would not dislike Bharat intrinsically might dislike it because of the political implication. Oh! Okay, I did not realize there's more to it. I just thought, oh, India is the name that British people gave. Also, watch out. You see that pole? You're going to see it in other levels. You see that pole? The, it's just slow down. I, I also hope you'll appreciate how much I'm just like strife running this game. It's like, you know, but yeah, it's noticeable. Like legit, like, hold on. Watch me go down the slope. Now watch me go back up it. It's legit. You get that, like, Route 2 speed going. Um, I will not say I know enough. Yeah, I I mean, I probably know less than you, so... Um, yeah. Point is, point is, isn't it weird that, like, the, you know... English and, and English tangential, uh, you know, like, America and... and even us to some degree. I don't know, actually. We never called, like, Native Aboriginals. Um, like, Indian. We'd always use the word Aboriginal, which literally just means from the origin, from the source, because they were from here first. Look at this button. That pushes this back, and look at that! The auto shotgun, as well as tech armor. Uh, armor just sort of blocks all damage to your health uh, for a while. So the auto shotgun is great, other than you're going to burn through your ammo sort of quick. Just shoots your regular shotgun a bit quicker, but you know what? It's good fun. I love the weapons in this game. Uh, 
Yeah, uh... Also, speaking of, um... India? I guess... You know... Aladdin takes place in Arabia, but this game takes place in Egypt! You go to a pyramid and fight Anubis! And they make net mention that on foot you somehow walked all the way straight into Egypt. Straight into like Karnak or something, I don't know man. You, you just fight Anubis and that kind of stuff. I'm just gonna wander into here, except this is the wrong portal. Uh, where am I going? I always bring up the map when I'm in these caves because I get so lost, bro. Egypt isn't water, so maybe... Uh, that is true, I guess. You, yeah, one could simply walk into Egypt. I don't know how you get in here. Is it like you gotta, like, press up against a wall? I don't think there's any wall, any, like, secrets to shoot. I think it is just, like, walls. But I see that, like, minigun right there, and I'm like, there's gotta be something to it. There's gotta be something to it, but I don't know why. Like, you probably just go straight through a wall, right? And, but no matter how many walls I go up against, I just can't figure it out. So, I'm gonna have to walk past that one. The minigun will come to us later. Don't worry, yeah, don't worry if you miss any of the secrets. Um, maybe the Chronoceptor piece would be nice, but we already got the Chronoceptor piece. We need we need one more key. I love this uh, this area here because uh, you just drop off and into the water. Got this little bit down here for more health, lots of health all over the place. Though. Um. But yeah, yeah, I, I don't know why you go into Egypt, I'm very certain you go into, like, um, some, uh, like the Mayan, uh, like, kinda, like, temple or something, it's all, like, abandoned, like, lost ruins, and you fight, like, the, I'm very certain, actually, it could just be India, because you got, like, the, the, the beings with the four arms, like, the statues. But yeah, it's like, but then again, it's like, well, India is a bit far off from Arabia, so what's the deal there? And the genie has no powers the whole game, so uh, there's no, you just walk that one. What a bizarre game. Um, maybe one day I would play it on stream. It's, it's the second worst game I've played all year. Um, it's not, for reference, the worst game I have played this year is a game which, heads up by the way, uh, it's uh, Marvel's The Avengers. I had a huge rant about it when I beat it. Um, and ultimately, at the, you know, at the end of the day, at least that, uh, that Aladdin game, you know, there's bits, there's parts of it that are alright. It's got terrible bonus games. It's got like, it's got so many bad parts about it and it feels super rushed. It's got some bits that are okay. That Avengers game, I don't know, man. I like the more I think about it, the the less fun I think I had, and uh, that's a shame because the game is getting delisted in two weeks. You will not be able to buy it uh, after two weeks. It is currently ninety percent off on Steam. as the end portal, by the way. Be warned, <laughs> the key is past the end portal. You gotta you gotta be on your toes. There you go. Uh, the Avengers game, yes, the twenty twenty one. You know, it's been three and a little bit years, and they've they're taking it off sale for some reason. It can't be licensing, right? There's no music. It's just this is the Avengers. How strange! And we're back to the starting level uh, where you can uh, you can put some keys down for level four, but you can't keep going into level four. Yeah, no, I. Who made the game? It, it's by um Crystal Dynamics and uh, published by Square Enix. It's like. This is by people who I would, like, I love. I love their stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they, did a, they did a push, Square Enix did a push where it's like, oh, we got an Avengers game. And they showed it off at, uh, I think it might have been at the Game Awards or it could have been at the State of Play, like, 2019. And I was like, ooh, that's an interesting thing. And, you know, they're coming straight out of making Tomb Raider. That's got to be pretty good. And, uh... 
Yeah, no, it's it's horrendous because they basically said microtransactions or bust. The game is built as a games as a service kind of game, um, and it's just filled to the brim with like microtransactions for cosmetics, uh, grindy gameplay to just constantly level up characters, random loot mechanics that are just not fun and also sort of don't make sense. Um, but the worst part is the game that you will buy and play is a twisted kind of interpretation of that in an attempt to hide away the fact that there were microtransactions. Um, too, too strange. Oh yeah, 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 it's entirely that. Um, yeah, like, it, it's it's 100% the suits. I don't think any game developer legitimately thinks gouging players for more money is really, like, you know, a fun idea. I definitely see why smaller, you know, payments can sometimes get you more revenue without really interfering with the quality of the game that much. Um, I think people have sort of accepted DLC, like drip-fed DLC all the time. Square Enix, I believe, would be pulling a games as a service game because they made losses or less profit and got hard data uh, that the model was worse than classic sales models, which is great. That is true, yes. And, and I'm glad that they've reversed course. I wish that EA and 2K realized that with their sports titles, but also I guess maybe it depends on the title. I think it actually works out for the sports titles. Um, which is a shame because, uh, like, legit, like, there's so many microtransactions in, like, I, I think I did the math, it's like, it costs, like, nearly f 600 or $700 to max out a single character in the new NBA game because they just keep making the microtransaction currency worth less and less. They're trying to find that spot that, like, will earn them less revenue and then they're gonna just ride that balance the whole time but right now it's like they can keep pushing that um yeah sports styles make sense as a game as a service except they sell you the a, a new game every time um i hate that um and i know i played fifa 98 earlier but i hate that lots of sports games sort of make some mechanics worse to always make like the long time players feel like every game is an upgrade i like how this is a drop down just at the beginning by the way this whole level by the way is like a much different level because it's all like this climb up to the top um so it's a it's a very different level aesthetically and that's why i was like the first two levels aren't representative of the level design that the whole game uses from there on out uh, for those games, Games as a Service was a natural evolution. Yeah, I guess, yeah. But I do wish that, like, you know, there were more meaningful differences between the games. Um, also, actual lava on this side. This lava is the kind that just hurts. Look at that. Lots of, lots of triangles for the lives. I haven't even died yet. It'll probably happen, don't worry. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I've got the Unity situation queued up. Um, which, I, I guess that's a good tangent to, to go from Avengers to that. But uh, I'll, I'll detail the whole situation in case uh, a lot of people probably know, but um, if you're watching this back years down the line, uh, sometime, I think it was Tuesday. Um, yeah, oh, it's, it's one of the most... This is the same spot, but it will put me into the other portal. This this one is a uh, like that's just the ground that will warp you back to the beginning. But it's like oh, you gotta jump on this over and over again. Um, but yeah, for for anyone who doesn't know the uh, the Unity situation, Unity is a video game engine. If you don't know that in the future, then rip Unity because uh, they were like kings for a while. I remember back in like 2010, um, I actually, I, fun fact, I have a game on Congregate when I had like 
you know, no programming experience, and I actually made this, like, simple, like, platformer game using as much, like, scraped together code as I could, like, trying to follow tutorials, trying to understand stuff. It's not great, um, but it's a game, technically. I had ideas as well for other things. I think it's more a showcase of my Sibelius music at the time, probably more so. I'm more invested than most because my sister's partner is actually a game dev from Small Indie Studio, and they said it would really make a huge problem in their long-term plans if that goes through. Um, real talk, I think... Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the situation. So Unity is a game engine. Um, they've been around for a, quite a few years, but over time they've sort of done real, you know, iffy moves. Um, uh, they have a, I believe they have a model where, you, you know, there's a free version of the engine. Uh, but, you know, if you make so much money, um, you know, over the lifetime of a product, they do want you to buy a license for the, for the Unity engine. Um, which is sort of what, like, Unity's always, like, Unreal does the same thing. Um, and that's a pretty normal model, because, like, when you make money, then you should be paying for the software you use to do it. That makes sense. Uh, and not, like, just any money as well. They're at least, like, hey, you know, you can make a bit. I'm not the chance to talk to him in depth about the situation. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, like, TLDR, this is one of the most baffling decisions, and I hope everyone responds to this immediately, like, legit. So, uh, what they announced recently was something called the Unity Runtime Fee. They introduced this fee, uh, to basically say, oh, you know, like, developers love using the Unity Editor. Today we're introducing a, a fee for the Unity Runtime, the component that ships with your games. This is the first time in, like, I'm very certain in all the legal documentations, terms and conditions, all the stuff, not once do they ever mention Unity Runtime as a separate product. Unity Runtime is the thing that is distributed with the Unity Editor, and when you ship games, you distribute, you know, mscorelib.dll and unityengine.dll. That's your Unity Runtime, and, and, and you know, there's an engine executable. Which is generic, by the way, for all all games on uh, the engine. I mean, it differs by the you know the engine version, but so um, they hope they get in trouble because of uh, the management action. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I should also announce, uh, yeah, the the CEO, um, and I it might be more than just the CEO, but like they sold like millions of dollars of stocks. Maybe it was in the one and a half million dollars. Um, but it's like, that's classic, like, shorting, like, um, you know, kind of strategy, which is, I'm very certain it's illegal, of, uh, basically, getting rid of your stocks, drop-kicking your company to the curb, and then, hey, your stocks are cheap, so all the people who bought all your stocks, you know, effectively lost value, and then at a later point in time, when your stocks haven't worked, you know, aren't worth as much, you just buy them back again. That is, a, like, I'm very certain that is not a very legal move, but I don't know. Does anyone know? I, I don't know my legalese. Um, so yeah, so the CEO sold the stocks, and then they announced this baffling decision to introduce the, run, the Unity runtime fee. So as of January 1st, 2024, Unity will uh, charge you uh, once you have 200,000 total installs of your game. Installs is the key word here. Uh, and I believe you also have to have made over $200,000 US of, of revenue over the lifetime of the product. Um, but the installs, I think the installs is also a lifetime, is it not? Yeah. Um, and from that point on, if you have a Unity free or a Unity Plus license, except uh, your Unity Plus license should be expiring soon as well because they also got rid of that. Um, and they made the Unity Pro plan cost more than the Unity Plus, so... Uh. Um, uh, you have to pay 20 cents per install after the first 200,000 over the lifetime of your product. Uh, this, this is irrelevant to how much money you have made after the 200,000 that puts you over the threshold. Um, this means if you make a free game that, you know, has microtransactions or something like that, which therefore means that, you know, the average, like, payment, the average amount of revenue per player is actually quite low. 
um, for example, less than 20 cents. Oh, look at that. Suddenly, your game costs more for people to download. It costs you more for people to download than for the revenue that you get back. Which means your game is worth, or rather, Unity is stealing 100% of your revenue. Now, for some people, oh, it's not actually that bad. But, like, okay, well, you know, let's take a step back. Uh, that's installs of the game. Unity, for years may I add, has been tracking the installations of your game. Now, it doesn't really mean anything, but when you start up a game for the first time, Unity is gonna know, like, oh, who you are, what's your OS, what's your system, all that stuff. And that saves into the app data folder or wherever your application data is configured. And then it sends, yeah, it sends that to Unity, probably for analytics. Unity is, you know, partially an, uh, a video game engine and partially an advertising platform for the video game engine, most likely. Um, we've got a save point here already. Wow. I like this teleporter as well. It just puts you onto the roof. Um, you can really sequence break hard if you lean right, but you probably shouldn't. Um, but I like how, like, big and open the space is, and you're sort of just exploring around and trying to, like, see everything in this level. I like it. Um, so, uh... So, it's installs, which means if you delete the game, uh, in theory, Unity... You know, I think it, you have to clear your application data, so maybe it doesn't track it every single time. But depending on your uninstaller, it will uninstall the game data. I think Unity probably has that as a default. Um, which means you count as a new install. Uh, this means that the average person doesn't cost 20 cents. The average person might cost one dollar, because the average person installs five times. Uh, on iOS and, and Android, this is actually even, you know, harsher because a lot of people will free space on their phone and maybe move back and so on. You're constantly writing that line. Like, uh, if your game costs a dollar, one, Apple already takes 30 cents out of your cut. And then, so, like, 100% of your, your revenue isn't even, like, you know, the worst of it. 70% of your revenue is enough to still be crippling. You can't deal with 70% of your revenue being taken away like that. Um, for people who are making, like, big video games like this one, where it's like, oh, you know, the game costs, uh, 20 US dollars. 20 cents per install is not as bad. But, you know, we gotta be looking out for the little man in the everyday case. 20 cents per install is not very, you know, balanced. Like, that that's just punishing little apps and not punishing big companies. Why are we not punishing the big companies that can't afford to pay 20 cents? Also on top of that, uh, 20 cents? Some people like, um, I think the guy who created Crab Game, he actually made another game that had 12 million downloads and Crab Game's got about 16 million. That's 28 million downloads, aka 5.2 million US dollars. Uh, granted, I think there's the threshold that probably needs to count for both, but still, that's in the millions of dollars. He's like, I have not made a million dollars in my life. No way can I afford to pay Unity five million, let alone one million. Uh, I like this part, by the way, you've got this like section here and you've got to hit all these switches around in order to lower these steps. It's a very curious love of this one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, ultimately, you know, Unity is, you know, okay, okay, <laughs> the real Unity, as in the lowercase u Unity, the real Unity is the, uh, the consensus that the entire community had when they saw this. They were like, it's September, what kind of April Fool's joke is this? And, uh, yeah, no, this, this is baffling, and I don't think anyone could even attempt to defend this. No, no one, no one believes this is like, you know, holding. Legally binding, probably not as well, because if you made a game on the Unity engine, you never signed up to this. So how can they suddenly change the terms on you? If 
I released an engine, and it was open source, uh, and, and, you know, royalty free, we'll even say. I don't get to turn around and say, actually, no, I don't want it to be royalty free, and all the lifetime sales of your game suddenly have to go to me. You can't change the terms on that. You have to announce that you're changing the terms, and then for all future products, for all future effort, because we're in this kind of annoying part where, like, if you let something run forever, you know, you shouldn't be bound to any updated terms. Like, the best you can say is, like, someone is terminating a service, which is often in the terms that existed already, anyways. Um, but yeah, like, legally binding, I don't think this is the case. And if Unity is absolutely, like, if they have the goal to commit to this and actually, like, go ahead and really, like, you know, charge lots of tiny indie developers millions of dollars, which, by the way, like, this will probably, like, realistically... Well, sorry, not realistically. Um, I think if everyone had infinite money and could actually pay this, this will probably earn them billions of dollars. I think this legitimately, like, there's so much money that they'd be, like, grabbing out of this. Um, now, I, I assume in a boardroom, that's probably what they heard. They heard this will earn us billions of dollars and take back, like, loose revenue. Only problem, I, I, I don't know, like, we all like saying that business people are evil. Um, and to some extent, like, hey, you know, like, they're going to value profits over customer value. Now, customer value is not mutually exclusive from, uh, from profits. You need a good business that people will, will back and defend and that kind of stuff, um, in order to actually make a ton of money. That's why lots of companies like Valve makes a bajillion on Steam, and Steam is not particularly, like, they've not done anything to go more aggressive into their profits. But what Steam does is it constantly builds itself as being the best service, and when anyone goes, hey, you know, I'm gonna make a competitive service at the game store, you know, it has big shoes to fill, as opposed to everyone is immediately able to jump onto something like Threads, because the current situation of Twitter slash X is terrible. No one likes Twitter slash X. I'm just gonna call it Twitter. I'm not gonna call it X. Who does? Um, so Unity, you know, has market share already because it's, you know, a big engine with a free license, and it was one of the earlier ones with a free license. I like how this looks like I'm just constantly going like nowhere. Trust me, like this is gonna circle back onto the onto the existing part of the level. Let's hope it is. We'll see. Do I remember where the chronoceptor piece is? Not really. Bro, I'm really feeling it today, by the way. It was like 32 degrees today, which is not like... That's not blistering hot. Oh, look, key. Level 5 key. That's not blisteringly hot, but it is like... It keeps the heat so much for like the whole day. Oh, I remember where the chronoceptor is. It's a very weird spot, that chronoceptor. You'll see it, you'll be like, oh, okay, weird. Alrighty, I ate lives. Are we gonna hit the elusive 999 at the end of the stream? Maybe. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I, I don't want to characterize any particular person at Unity as evil, because ultimately, at the, at the end of the day, I don't think any of this is legally binding. It is such an aggressive cash grab with, by the way, zero value to an end customer. Your customers are, like, rather, Unity's customers should be the people who buy the engine. It's not the people who download the games. People who download the games ideally want a good running engine, but the developers are the ones who are the consumers of your engine. As well as animators and other kind of stuff, I know that there's lots more use cases than just video games for Unity. It goes through, it means no new games will be made with Unity. 100%. No one will ever, you know, like, I think the biggest thing with this is customer trust. Like, if Unity tomorrow just goes, okay, we heard your feedback, sorry everyone, which by the way, it's been a whole week, they have not done that. But if they went tomorrow, they will regain some of the trust but i think this should be a permanent mark this should be a 100 permanent mark that someone and multiple people sign off on this and announce this 
thinking that this was a positive thing to announce. That people legitimately were like, oh, you know what? I really do wish that my... Oh. There you go, I fell off a cliff. Also, my backpack has gone. I hate that your backpack disappears, but... Listen, I'm not gonna die enough times that that'll be a problem. I did... That was a bit far back. <laughs> um... But, yeah, oh, like, legit. I will probably... It dis yeah, the backpack disappears when you die. Um, so my max ammo is now half of what it was for, like, the past, like, you know, a dozen minutes, a few dozen minutes. But I'll, I'll probably pick up another backpack at some point, like, throughout the game. Just don't keep dying. That's your only, that's your only thing you gotta stop doing. Um, it is a punishment, but it's not like the end of the world. It is sort of annoying when you're at the beginning of the game, though, because it's like, okay, you've got arrows, which I have been using the arrows. I haven't even mentioned, by the way, but, like, um, when you got the regular arrows, it is a pro strat that, like, people don't actually notice when they play this game. Is, uh, like, when you draw back your regular arrows, so once I get through all these tech arrows. Yeah, they put more tech arrows up here, so I'll never run out. Um, you can actually, like, one-hit kill, uh, well, not bosses, but any enemy with the, the regular arrows. Uh, if you pull it back, you'll see that the, the arrow, like, sparkles a little bit. Like, okay, you gotta, like, press that and then just, like, alt it. Um... There you go. So you'll see that the, the arrow at the bottom, like, sparkles just briefly, and that will one-hit things. For, like, if you fire in the next, like, second or two. It's a nice mechanic, and people don't realize it's there, but it's like, no, no don't sleep on the arrows. They'll help you out the whole game. Um, yeah. But given that you've only got, like, three ammo types right now, your bullets, which sort of run out a bit quick, I think different enemies are weak, like, different weapons will deal more or less damage than, you know, just a fight, like, they'll deal damage, so, um, but yeah, Unity is, like, dead to me as a company, and not exclusively because of this, because I would like to know that Unity has been acquiring multiple, um, like, kind of component-based, um, you know, companies, and I think, uh, what's one called? Iron Source? Is that one? That's an advertising agency. Now, Unity has said, I'm, pre I'm pretty certain they've said this somewhere. It's not on that page. They have said that, like, in certain cases, they will waive the Unity runtime fee. Now the question is, which cases? Um, and I'm pretty sure someone's found out that if you have a Unity developed game that uses Iron Source for advertising, the fee will be waived. Now, isn't that quite weird? The Unity owned. There's another backpack, by the way. Um, the Unity owned uh, advertising company waves you out of millions of dollars of fees. Isn't that kind of funny how that's the case? It's almost as if there's competing advertising software that other developers are using, and Unity doesn't like that. They want you to use their solution. So they've decided to just strong arm everyone into using it. Uh, only problem, they wrote the, you know, the policy, the Unity runtime fee, in such a way that it sort of applies to everyone. Even games that don't particularly have, like, like smaller indie games that only cost $5, but they're small and indie, and people probably only want to spend $5. You're cutting it very close when you've got that runtime fee. Anything less than that is often in the mobile space. It's often in that, like, free-to-play, you know, microtransaction model. A lot of those games... I don't even want to say a lot. A good number of those games have ads. But, like, is this the ultimate, like, you know, goal of Unity? Is to strong-arm people into using their, like, advertising, you know, engine? Because if that is real, and I, I do want to say if that is real, this may be the, maybe not the of all time, but like it is one of the stupidest marketing decisions 
the stupidest monetization decision I've ever seen. Never mind the fact that, like, there's clearly markets full of people who are just absolutely screwed and suddenly owe your company millions, and they're probably just gonna not. They're probably just gonna be like, nah, legally, they've got no grounds. Uh, worst case, they're going to remove games from Steam. As a preservationist who uploaded Evacuate onto Archive.org, by the way, you can check that out if you wanted to play that one. Um, legit, that angers me so much. There is software, there is stuff that people worked hard on that suddenly, you know, they're being told in retroactively that their game now costs so much more to have on Unity and they're just going to bail. They're just going to be like, nah, man, the project it doesn't exist. I'm deleting it. Uh, because also, yeah, on top of that, um, the installation trigger, oh, there's another one of those, um, can very easily be fudged. It's so easy to write, like, any basic script that just goes, take the game, pretend to install it, pretend, like, run it, pretend to uninstall it, rinse and repeat. You can do that, you could probably do that hundreds of times a second. Maybe not hundreds, it doesn't, you need the games to take the bit to, to launch up. But you can definitely, you know, multiply that for more clients, more virtual machines, that kind of stuff. Like, you can, you can do all those kinds of things with zero effort. Now, Unity is saying, oh, we know, we know what's going on. I believe there's a door here that just magically opens up. Like, you're hearing it, it's all the way here, like, deep in this cave. That's a secret area. Um, there we go. There's your canopy again. I believe we've got, yeah, two of the keys. And, and the chronoceptor piece is ahead, and the key, don't worry. Um, there we go. The ancient city. I gotta keep, like, double checking just which, which save slot was it? Uh, this, this part of the level is, uh, the bane of my existence, though. I've not played the Nintendo 64 levels, but I, I don't think they're quite the same. I think that this version does, you know, extend the game a fair bit. But I don't quite know by how much. Uh, also, not enough to make it not two streams. So, we'll go with that. Um, but yeah, oh, this Unity thing absolutely baffles me. Uh, a lot of people then, you know, so what's the solution? So, number one, um... As a game developer, I'm not a legal, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to, like, <laughs> take my opinion with a grain of salt, but I'm very certain, one, as if any non-American company is even going to get sued. Because if you're, you know, an overseas company, like, for example, like, Russia and China, don't particularly care about pirating American content. Um, <laughs> Like, it's just, that's just an unfortunate, you know, fact of life, but they don't, you know, a lot of people pirate, and, uh, their government isn't gonna hold them accountable, and in the realms of digital software, where it's very easy to, the chronoceptor piece is up here, by the way, it's just curiously up here. Um, uh, this puts you up here, by the way. This does not exit the level, despite looking like the exact same portal. This actually enters a boss room. There are three boss rooms in the game, one in level 3, one in level 5, and one in level 8. Uh, this is a good luck. You're gonna be fighting this guy in a jeep. And he's coming at you, so... Fortunately, the explosive shotgun does pretty alright. He drives around, he goes. Uh, they also do spawn more ammo around the outside, so if you need more explosive shots, you can. Now, unfortunately, uh, his jeep just respawns after you kill it. Uh, I wish I had more guns, though. Although the tech arrows do a good job. You gotta be a circle strike champ, though, to, to do this. Ow, ow, ow. There you go. Uh, that's right, there's three jeeps. Actually, no, sorry, there's two Jeeps, but then he, he gets out of his Jeep and starts shooting you, so... Don't worry, don't worry, this is the only boss that changes its health bar like that. Oh, I should get him with the charge shot. Doesn't actually do a ton of damage. Okay, we'll just get him with the regular bullets. Um... But yeah, oh, this is like... 
I'm, I'm glad, you know, everyone sees this, and I'm also glad everyone's memed it, and I, I highly urge you, do not forget that Unity has done this. Companies deserve our trust as customers, and I'm not saying we should, um, you know, like, you know, screw over companies all the time, or really, I, generally, you know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be mutual, you gotta understand that, yes, they gotta make money in some ways, but Unity is not a company that's losing money. Unity is a company that has been doing very fine for a very long amount of time. This is extra. This is on top. And this breaches my trust for that company. Uh, so, yeah. Like, for me as a developer, what do you do? Well, you're probably going to use Unreal or Godot. Godot, I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, lean on. Godot is not perfect. It's not a perfect substitute. I believe Unreal is probably, you know, the best you can do if you want to like feature replace uh this is a uh, pulse rifle by the way goto is pretty cool yeah i've given goto a try i i do like what it's going for so um there you go there's three keys let's do one more level for the stream and then that's half of the game so uh so here we go the ancient city all right which one was level four this one the ruins the devil with it in 2019 it's gotten better as well. Um, this is a very curious level because it's effectively like a plus shape. And awkwardly backwards from the plus shape is a place you want to go to behind the portal. This pulse rifle is great by the way. So at this point in the game it's like, oh, okay, we've got another ammo type and another weapon. Um, and we can go from there, so... Uh, but yeah, if you're le legit, by the way, I also just want to know, um, name two companies that make, uh, free games, or, like, they, they release free products in Unity that rely on microtransactions. And, uh, I have two products for you. Pokemon Go and Genshin Impact. And no way, no way are Unity going to even... They are not. They're not going to, you know, scrape those two. If they somehow win a court case, I will eat my words. But trust me, if they try, and trust me, they will try, they are not going to get a single cent out of this install fee for those two games. Games that, you know, have high reinstall counts, and they're free. A lot of people will install and not necessarily buy. But... You know, by golly, they certainly will try. I like how blue this level is, by the way. It's just very blue. I know we're back into the kind of, you know, canyon aesthetic. Uh, there's a fun little ledge there, by the way. Let's just put us... Lots of cheeky triangles all over the place. I'm gonna walk right past one. There's so many triangles, I swear. Um, yeah, I would really like to understand, um, you know, a engine more. Um, I feel like, I mean, I understand Unity from like a, a lower, you know, angle, but I honestly don't know like how to like make my own real game out of it. Um, I think my problem is I, I suck at art assets and I have a very short attention span. I I want the results right away. Dang it! So, oh my goodness! Wow. It's the same URL every time. They don't try. They don't try these bots. Oh well. Just remember everyone, if you want to get, uh, you know, farm bots for no reason, like why, why fake engagement? I know I've mentioned this before, but like why fake engagement numbers? I want to know that like every single person who's viewing my streams is real. I, d I don't feel comfortable when my Rayman 2, like, first stream has, like, 120 views for some reason. Like, if that's bots, eh, because the second stream didn't get anywhere near as many views. I know more people will view stream 1. But, yeah. So, yeah, the Unity thing is stupid. I'm glad, I'm glad we, I don't, I love how the camera super tilts until you, you know, walk forward a bit. <laughs> It's just always like that on that ledge. The music is great in this game, by the way. It doesn't particularly, like, stand out. Um, like, it doesn't, like, scream out in any, like, individual context. But as a whole, it's like, oh, it's great. It's got that, like, tribal beat. 
Uh, also, level 8 key, I just want to note. That is a key to open level 8. You're going to need to see that in order to even beat the game. So, drop down, we are back at the beginning of the level. Something about Fextra Life kind of grey zone view botting. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of wikis do this. And, and like, uh, yeah, I guess this is, like, on the topic of, like, you know, companies fudging stuff. Uh, by the way, if you go this way, that's the end of the level already. This level is incredibly short, um, if you view it as that. But this level, you know, we got to get the Chrono Scepter piece and we got to get two other keys. I love this room. You have all these enemies kind of, like stuck here. It's like in a Doom when you've got the ceiling like too low on them or something. And uh, if you go over to one of these... I'll oh, just stay in the center. They all come to life, including this alien which doesn't appear later until fairly later in the game. Creature's there. I, I actually like how some of these enemies will have like variants that appear later on. This guy especially is a bit of a pain. Because he starts like throwing these like mystical skulls. I'm very certain they're skulls. Um, but uh, this wall lowers, so you can continue on this way. Uh, but yeah, imagine the level like a plus shape. By the way, uh, you come from the bottom. You can keep going south if you want to as well. You'll end up in that crossroads, and if you head west, that's uh, that's the end of the level. So north is one way, east is another way. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about Fextra Life themselves, but I'm always amazed by, like, how, you know, how high the results show up in, like, search engines when you're looking up, like, certain things. And, like, yeah, it doesn't feel legitimate. It really does feel like, you know, like, this content isn't great. There we go, a level 6 key. I like this grey ceiling. Very nice, very fun. And we're back out. <laughs> Not going to the end just yet. We're gonna keep going in this direction. Past the raptors. Don't worry, there's a lot more level in this direction. So we've got this little bit over here where uh, take a bit of a leap of faith. A little tiny ledge. We'll continue around. Um, but yeah, oh, it's a bit. Yeah, view boarding is a bit sad. Like, I don't know why. Um, I do want fake numbers, I guess, to, you know, in, in some cases it's like, yeah, like, you know, hey, if I'm a company, um, say I have an energy drink, uh, they did uh, become the wiki for most Dark Souls games when Dark Souls 2 came out, no one else works on a good wiki. I do remember, like, trying to read along with the Fextra Life stuff, and it was just wrong in quite a bunch of places. Uh, and I know all wikis can be. Also, by the way, Dark Room, I can't even see the end of my shotgun. Um, uh, oh, see how I can't pick it up anymore? We're at that point. Now I can pick up the, the little tiny ones. But eventually I'm going to hit 99 and suddenly all of these triangles mean nothing. Oops. Oh, there's only two left here, so... Oh, there you go. See? The triangles mean nothing now. Until I die. And they will mean something. Um, yeah, I mean, I can imagine a game like Dark Souls is one where, like, there's a lot of just wrong information around. This is a bit of a leap, though. You gotta work your way back. At least Factual Life had 500 saves on something, making it likely one of those was true. I'm trying to think, like, what's another, like, website that's sort of like that. Um, I'm gonna say Moore's Law is dead. The YouTuber. I don't know, that's a bit of a dig. I don't watch enough of his content to really know. I do know that he's wrong a fair bit of the time. You just gotta, you know, leakers are like that. Sometimes they're real, sometimes they change under the hood, and sometimes they were wrong from the start. And, uh, leakers sort of, <laughs> certainly doesn't, you know, he doesn't go back and really correct things a ton. Although, again, maybe it's my, uh, my, uh, my exposure to his content. 
Uh, but yeah, like, if let's say I had an energy drink. It's like, yeah, who do you want to advertise your energy drink to? Listen, if some guy has fudge numbers and you can't tell that they're fudge numbers, you know, you might go with them as, you know, who you're sponsoring with. And that is probably the reason why all this botting stuff happens on the internet, is because people drive their business and their engagement by these raw numbers that can be botted. Um, the KPIs, if you will, your key performance indicators. Uh, which means, as a company, please, please set your key performance indicators to, um, validatable figures. Like, for me, my subscriber count on YouTube is not real, like, in the sense of, and I'm not saying I fudge it, um, but, like, people, because also, yeah, I saw people on Twitter saying, like, yeah, there's certain topics that I can, like, talk about where suddenly, like, I get, like, you know, 100 likes out of nowhere. Just complete like accounts like that and yeah people are like yeah like someone is driving bot accounts for certain like topics or ideas um for their own reasons whether it's to push an ideology whether it's to push money um like there's lots of reasons why like people would run bots like this also hey we got another just tunnel caves tunnels all over the place try and try and navigate around um so the worst part is Sometimes, the person who appears to benefit from this, or like, you know, whoever you see who's got bots, sometimes it's not actually them who have the bots, you can't even tell. Um, so, which is why I think the values should be worthless. There is no point really measuring your likes as like a measure of anything, really. It doesn't mean your content is actually like really that more engaging. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you're... Um, you know, like, like what I would like to, to have is more real conversations and to some degree, I mean, I don't know, I might get Markov chained, it might be a bot that's just like, hey, I comment on, you know, a fair number of your videos and they look real and honestly to me, I can't tell and it's getting real harder with AI stuff, I know, but, um, you know, like, I, all I want is just like some legitimate feedback and then that's it. I don't particularly, you know, desire for my channel to grow. If it grows, it grows, but, you know, like, all I want is just, you know, people who hear what I say, that's it. Um, so, yeah, whenever, like, some, some things get botted, I don't know if, like, some of my videos had legitimate views back in the day. I never know what to do about this, oh, oh, oh. I never know what to do about this room, because there's no, like, teleporter to lead you back. Uh, very certain there must be a way to get up there but it's like it's a pit I haven't got the chronoceptor piece by the way um, I know where it is I know where it is off the top of my head but I haven't gotten it yet so just because that was all keys doesn't necessarily mean we're just done with this level just yet um, but yeah yeah ah bots irk me big business irks me as well business for no value there must be, a, there has to be like a teleporter somewhere that leads you back and I just have no clue where it is. So I just wander back through the level like a chump. I wish this was a speedrun. I, what's the speedrun times on Turok? There has to be like a sub one hour, right? Like people are just like, yeah, I know where the keys are. I go for it, so. If we head up here, there's this whole like extra section. It's just like chilling up here as well. Like, I've gotten all the keys. We, we picked them all up, but. This, this, this part, this like kind of area, it's got like all these little like kind of side parts, these enemies that hop down at you. There's a lot to this game that's not like just along the beaten path as well. So this game is actually really nice for a replay. I would actually recommend this game. Like, I mean, most of the games I play I would generally recommend, um, but like this one is a real fun one for like a replay. Um, because like you'll just see things you didn't quite see before or the levels make a little more sense as you go along um, You don't get too lost in this game as well. It's got enough like landmarks and Save points like this. Just, I haven't saved in this level at all. This is just a 80% 2830 whoo, whoo. Is that the 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 night dive version as well or that's the uh, original PC version. I like this like spiky dinosaur um, I'm curious if people even run the night dive one. 
By the way, isn't it weird that there's no, like, quick saves? They've stuck with, like, checkpoint saves. Which, uh, to me, that terrified me as a, as a young guy. Oh, this as well. This portal just, like, stands here. There is an item over there, which is very, very nice. Uh, you're gonna need to step on all three switches, and then, with enough time, uh, 100% 33, 34. I'm curious what the 100% like even targets though, because I, I mentioned that earlier. I was like, I don't know what 100% means. Is it all secrets? Is it just counting all the secrets? Knife only 3802. That's pretty good. Because especially you gotta do the bosses, so. Yeah, so run back there to the lava bit, then try and do some, some strafe jumps. Get that minigun. The minigun uses its own ammo. It also burns through the ammo crazy, so if you don't have the, uh, the, the backpack, then you're a little stuffed. Also, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of occasions where, like, doors and stuff are triggered by enemies. Like, you're gonna see me take out this one guy, and that door just goes down as a response. Um, it doesn't show up a ton, but it shows up a bit. Um, there are a bunch of warps here. Each warp just casually puts you in that lava pit, except for one of them. Just magically, one of the teleporters does not put you in the lava, and I don't really know why, uh, but it's, uh, this one directly, like, I guess if you're coming from, like, 12 o'clock, or, you know, if you're looking at, like, a clock, it'd be 9 o'clock. They use key items as rule. Key items? So not the secrets. But you have to get all the keys, and the chronos have to piece. Is that it? Is it literally just, I also got the chronos have to pieces? I mean, it does mean that you have to go into this room that I'm in. Uh, because if you're not doing 100%, you don't have to go in here. I hate this room, by the way. There's just enemies all over the place. And I know that, like, that doorway was... Uh... Did you like that, by the way? <laughs> Secrets all over the place. Hey! Good old grenade launcher. So finally, I can, I can burn through these grenades. Uh, the grenades do hit you, so it's a little less useful than you'd like at times, but it's great. Keys in the corner center. Okay, so I guess, uh, according to speedrunning, I'm doing a 100% run. I can guarantee finding those secrets is a very, like, fun thing to do as well if you want to go back. That's another save point. I'm just going to walk past the save point. Everyone likes a good old, like, temple area as well. Uh, let's not trigger these bits, uh, just yet, even though this looks like this leaves the area. Trust me, this is where you continue to go further down, and then you'll backtrack and go back. Oh, wrong shotgun. There we go. Well, yeah, lots of enemies drop grenades, so the grenade launcher is actually, like, eternally useful. I love these massive rooms, though, where it's like, there's just a ceiling ages away. Um, DOS games that have, like, massive rooms like this. Duke Nukem is great at doing massive rooms. Oh, I love it. I should play Duke Nukem at one point. I'm surprised I actually, like, I, I, I saw they had Duke Nukem in my mind, like, ages ago to play, and I'm surprised I didn't actually, like, queue that up. Probably because it's got a Christmas expansion and I want to play it around Christmas, but, uh, not, not this Christmas. I've got another plan. Go stand here, and then immediately get terrorized by these things. Like, they're just gonna knock you off, and you're just gonna wait until that platform comes back down. It's so cruel. You can also, you can actually, like, stand on top as well. There's a part of the level uh, where you can stand on top and see down, and I forgot where that was. But yeah, I feel like I'm sort of rushing through this game, but on the flip side, also it's like a wand or something. All the pieces are different looking. Um, but yeah, it, it sort of does feel like I'm rushing through the game, but trust me, like, if you sort of know what you're doing, you're gonna sort of play this game the same way I am. Uh, da, da, da. Now these switches have a very specific order, you want to sort of step on these two, like, last because the platforms, like, you'll see that one goes down, like, fairly quickly. So if you're trying to do a lap around the room, it's like, yeah, they've already gone down. Uh, this room is super bassy, and I don't know why, by the way. And then you go in here, and it's just all bass. It's all bass. 
like your ears just pop going in here. I don't know why you're gonna you hear like you hear the audio like popping. I don't know why. There's so much sound going on. I'm, I'm gonna have to do some serious like audio mixing just to guarantee that part works fine. Um, this room also, this is above that whole pillar room, uh, which I, again, I love how, like, sort of creative their simple geometry actually gets. They've got bridges and platforms and all this stuff all over the place. For a game that came out in 1997, and uh, to focus on this game a bit, like, this game has some real, like, nifty use of 3D. This is a very great 3D experience of a game. And the fact that it's on the Nintendo 64 is like good fun. And look at that, it pops us at the end of the level. Uh, no boss in this level by the way, it's the next level. Which, uh, unfortunately, you're gonna have to wait until the next stream. Because we're back here at the hub. So uh, with that, uh, we've got all the keys for all the first four levels. Uh, four levels to go. Um, not as many keys to go, but uh, definitely still a good number of secrets and a good amount of content. The, the levels don't get shorter, including that eighth level by the way. It's a proper level, trust me. Uh, but I think that's it. That's pretty much all I wanted to get done this stream, so I would like to thank you Oh, oh my gosh, knock the knock the mouse make everyone throw up uh, I would like to thank you so very very much for watching if you enjoyed uh, the stream uh, You can you know you can follow on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube. You'll see the VOD if you missed any bit of it uh, and uh, yeah, if you um if you missed any bit of it, you know, watch there. If you want to watch it, if you're on YouTube and you want to watch it live, come to Twitch on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I realize it's not Daylight Savings next week, but the week after. Uh, it, yeah, it's a bit shorter. Um, I don't know, hour 40. Hour 40 It's not like... It's shorter than I usually do. I usually push over the two-hour mark. But, uh, I don't know. This was my plan. Maybe... Oh... Oh, <laughs> my Metroid Prime stream. Uh, that four hour killed me, I swear. I, I vowed never to do four hours again. If I see three hours, I'm going to try and wrap it up, unless I really, really know. And despite me loving Metroid Prime forever, I didn't know. <laughs> so, um, I'll plan it better. I, I've been planning my streams a lot more recently as well, so a lot of this, like you saw, um, I had a, a save from yesterday. I literally played through the entire game yesterday. I was like, oh, okay. That's, that's what this game is. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. I'm glad uh, you enjoyed it. If you did, you stuck around. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. One hour. Um, well, we, yeah, we do daylight... Sa I, sh I should mention this. We do daylight savings, um, not next week, but it's the Sunday after. And um, it would be Sunday the 1st of October. Our clocks go forward an hour. So the streams will be an hour earlier. Not next week, but the week after. So... Anyway, thanks everyone. Thanks for chilling. Have a good one. See ya.